Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Spy Family, episode one, my first impressions reaction. This is the newest reaction bait series, and I don't think I've ever used this term before, but I thought of it literally as I was starting this video, and it almost made me laugh, so I had to use it here. This is a recent reaction bait series, and what that means is that it is a series that almost kind of feels that it was not really made specifically but advertised in a way for it to be a bait for not just reactors but reviewers content creators and anime youtubers to make content about it feels like it was just the way it was advertised and everything it's like it, it bears resemblance to so many others that have, have just been the same way. It's one of those series that just has gotten an ungodly amount of attention, like, before it even technically aired. And it's like, okay, why? why? I've seen a couple screen caps and everything. I, I've heard about, I guess, the general gist of this series. Why is a series with such a kind of simple, not really interesting premise so talked about? Why is it being so heavily reacted to? And just why is there so much content from AnyTubers about it? So hopefully we're going to find that out today. Um, it's just like... Uh, in regards to its uh, my given status for it as a uh, reaction bait series or an anti tuber bait series, um, it, it's in kind of the same wheelhouse as uh, my dress up darling, and that one did impress me. So we'll see how this goes. So here's what I know about this series: I know that it's about an orphan girl who is adopted by a spy and that uh, this male spy she had I, I guess he adopts her I don't know the circumstances or anything about it and then a mother ends up coming into play who's an assassin also the mother has the same voice actress as Yamato from One Piece I do know that <laughs> um, I know that this girl has notably extreme facial reactions to things she has notably extreme expressions that's the word i was trying to think of um because they're kind of everywhere just like the comey face was everywhere when comey can't communicate first came out i've seen certain expressions of this little girl everywhere and yeah this is kind of become the new hotness with anime at the moment it's just one of those shows that is really hitting it big fans are loving it it's getting a lot of attention and i want to know why is it as funny as people seem to make it appear to be is there some charm to the characters and their dynamics with each other what kind of series really is i assume it's a slice of life comedy based on what i've seen people posting but that might be not the case at all i don't know <laughs> um i don't know what to expect but this is a series i wanted to check out just because of the fan reaction that it seems to be getting all over the internet so what can i hope to see well if it is a slice of life comedy i'm hoping it's funny i'm hoping it's enjoyable 
I'm hoping that the characters are likable and entertaining and that the situations are endearing and fun and entertaining. Entertainment is definitely the big hope for it. If it's not a slice of life comedy, then I just don't know what to expect, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, but I'm hoping it's good no matter what, as I do with everything I react to. I'm hoping it's good. I don't really know what this is going to deliver. Um, because as I've stated in the past, and as I will continue to say in the future, my viewpoints on various things are not always the same as the majority. There are a lot of really popular, really popular anime out there that I don't like. Such as Made in Abyss, or Neon Genesis Evangelion, or Demon Slayer. Anime that I just can't get into for one reason or another. And as I always state, it's perfectly fine if other people love it. I'm very supportive of that even. But I just don't. Um, so I, I can't just assume that just because the series is popular means I'm going to like it too. Because that's just not always the case with me. So I'm going to keep an open mind and go with go into it as hopeful as I can, but that's all I can really do here. And we'll see how it turns out. So we're just going to get into this and hope that it impresses. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after we watch it, come back here to the... I worded something wrong. Come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, out of... Just seeing people talk about this on social media and stuff, seeing all the hype surrounding it, seeing that multiple people have been reacting to it all, I am honestly surprised, but <laughs> really happy that I was not spoiled on her being sidekick. Like, I, I knew the basic premise of the series. I I, I know that the, the mother that's going to come in uh, has the same VA as Yamato in One Piece. I know that uh, he was a spy, that she's an assassin, and they, you know, he adopts the kid and everything, and she come, the mother comes in after. I, I knew this kind of stuff. I had heard literally nothing about the entire psychic child, though. And it's like, yes, this is obviously a thing that's been done in various media uh, to varying degrees and in varying ways. I mentioned Elf and Lead in the reaction. Um, that is definitely a way a genetically, uh, a genetic psychic child kind of thing. Although that's also very different. There's a lot more to that. And the anime itself doesn't even display everything um, that's in the original manga. Um, I don't remember everything about Elf and Lead, mind you. So it's just the general concept. And going from that though like I said I'm glad I was not spoiled on that because honestly that is the that that is the thing that pushed this over the edge for me and makes me like want to watch more of this want to react to more of this um so yeah obviously that's where I stand we are going to be continuing this at some point in the future um, so, what does this mean? What does this, uh, how, how did I think, what did I think of this episode and just the general premise based on it? So, this episode starting off with a murder was unexpected. Like, I, I, knew, I knew going into this that it was about, that there was a spy and an assassin. I did I, I thought this was going to be a more lighthearted, 
comedic slice of life series based again on everything I've been seeing people post on social media and, and that their jobs being a spy and assassin weren't actually going to be like shown or at least showcased that heavily I, I felt they were going to be more like family friendly to put it simply I, I didn't think it was going to go as heavy into it but no like again the, the episode literally starts with a murder <laughs> it's like oh and while there doesn't seem to be like a shit ton of blood and all I mean it's not like Bacchano or anything um, also I don't know why that's the specific example I thought of but it's still notable and it's like okay in fact we get a lot of, of the actual spy shit in this and while there's not like a lot of blood and like gruesomeness or whatnot, there's some notable imagery. Um, Twilight pointing and pressing the gun against, uh, I think his name was Edgar, Edgar's head, the back of Edgar's head. Like that's, that's notable imagery <laughs> uh, to showcase a threatening situation. Um, a little girl being captured by these evil people and being used as a hostage while showing visibly on her face how absolutely terrified she is. It's like, that's some serious imagery for this series. I, I feel almost like the people posting about this on social media are focusing on the wrong shit. <laughs> Like, they're focusing on Anya being cutesy or whatnot, and the expressions she makes, which are like, okay, sure, those are cutesy and fun and everything, and yes, that's part of this for sure. But it's like, can we, can, can we talk about the sidekick child? This girl who was literally created in a lab a as a tool for humanity, who has been bounced around orphanages and abandoned by multiple people throughout her young life who has serious issues coming and, and stemming from that like kind of tra trauma honestly we're not talking about that heavy shit you know the shit that's really fucking good like really good we're not talking about the actual cool spy shits in this episode. We're just going to talk about the comedy. The goofy comedy and the cutesy little girl. Let, let's bury the lead, why don't we? But again, I am so happy that that ended up being the case. That everybody is not talking about that. Um, not only because it did allow me to be surprised by this like really genuinely surprised by this but it also means that people are not spoiling the important shit and i like that <laughs> you guys know that i've kind of had I i've gotten upset at people in fandoms such as owl house and one piece for spoiling important shit and talking about important shit after like maybe a day of an episode being out or in some cases only maybe a couple hours but it's like there's like three episodes out of this currently i believe and no one i've seen has mentioned that at all and i love that i love that people are not talking about that spoiler even three episodes in Because again, it is such a big deal and it does, it, it changes honestly the context of how you view the series and the characters. Like going into this, just having seen a, like some random screenshots and seeing how people were talking about it. Again, I went into this thinking it was going to be a slice of life comedy. That's what I expected. This is not a slice of life comedy. There is some comedy aspects to it. There's probably going to be plenty of slice of life aspects. But this is a drama with some hints of sci-fi considering we have an artificially created human being 
and some legitimate heavy action thriller moments in it too it's just it's so unexpected in the best way i really was not expecting it to be like this and yes i i do agree with what i've seen people talking about anya's adorable she's she's a cutie she's an adorable little girl that's undeniable um but while she's adorable while her expressions are funny it's like that's only part of the series and yes that's her charm because she's a little girl and i'm very glad that even though she's shown to be smart she's not too smart i've talked about this before i'm not a huge fan of when shows make child characters stupidly smart like unrealistically stupidly smart to where it's like no kid would have this kind of thought pattern but no anya acts like a kid she thinks like a kid when you see her following um twilight out of the out of the house and sneaking around and, and she's like she's playing with him she's not understanding that he's telling her no because she wants to play with him she wants to be around him she wants him to love her because she's afraid of being abandoned again she's acting like a kid when she hears what he's talking about she hears him or here's what he's thinking about rather because she you know sidekick she hears him thinking about all the spy stuff and she's like oh cool spy i love this spy show that's on tv so it's like oh cool i get to meet an actual spy and she's like kind of geeking out like a little kid would at something like that when she hears him thinking about the possibility of you know giving her up again she she freaks out and starts crying because she doesn't want to be abandoned again when she hears him think or i, I can say hears it's basically hears him thinking about um like learning about her she starts rattling off things about herself i like peanuts i don't like carrots though and it's like again it's just i love this depiction of a little kid character it just feels so genuine and yeah there then there's the action stuff which is really well done the spy thriller stuff is interesting you want to learn about twilight's missions about what he's been doing about what he's going to be doing you see his first mission as a success in this and then he goes into the second one and it's like yeah you want to see how this plays out you want to see how these characters that are built up come into play when he goes to see that guy at the at, at the magazine stand it's like oh this is a really interesting scene he's getting information while also talking to his contact about what's been going on and they have almost kind of like this friendly rapport with each other that's neat i enjoy that so it's like it's it's not just anya that makes this series shine everything about it is well handled everything about it is enjoyable and so i'm actually excited to see where this goes i'm excited to maybe even learn more about all of these characters and their pasts to learn about more about what happened with twilight why he seemed to be living in squalor on the streets when he was a kid and how that led him into becoming a spy so he would make sure that no other kids ever had to go through with this so he could do good to help the world and help the kids by extension i want to know more about anya just why anya is this genetically created psychic child and why she's just randomly in the uh orphanage system like was that a plan or was she did she somehow escape uh her creators or something what's the deal with that and once we meet her i want to know about this assassin mom like what's her deal i just i just know she exists at this point 
and who her voice actor is. I want to know about her, too. It's like, I want to know. And that's always the sign of a good series. You are actively invested in the story and the characters. So this, this series did its job, and I applaud it for that. So yeah, as I said, we will obviously be getting to more of it in the future. We will be continuing this as a reaction series. Um, I don't know when, just whenever we end up getting into it. Like all of these first impressions reactions, just whenever we end up getting to it. Um, for the time being, though, uh, tell me in the comments below what did you think of the first episode of Spy Family. Uh, and for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.